Hey guys, welcome to another Unity 5 tutorial and this is going to be a showcase of showing you the best tips, tricks and overviews with creating realistic lighting and rendering within Unity. Now this is using the latest of Unity 5.6.2 and there will be later versions but all of the things that I'll show will be very similar in terms of um, the settings that I will show you today and also things in the past. They all sort of corroborate and will stay the same. So this is not the most definitive collection of tips and tricks because you can do a whole host of reading um, from the Unity sort of documents and I'll link you to the to the pages that you can have a look at and read. But I will give you the tips that I have learned over the time and the things that might help you achieve a bit of realism. Now this is the scene here, this might not be the most realistic scene you've ever seen. We might be able to achieve something similar like this and with the tips that I can show you, you can help you sort of push your game further to the realms of being a more photorealistic scene but it is something that I've got from the asset store. It's the 3D sci-fi kit starter kit and you can see in um, the game view here this is how it started so all in all it looks you know the scene looks okay just in general but you know there's a lot of ways that we can you know choose to improve this and if I go back into my scene there's a lot of ways where we can add a lot more depth to the scene and a lot more settings that we can change to try and achieve it and you can see that from my sort of test sample here we've got the sort of um, emissive lights all around the scene we use in reflections, reflection probes. We're going to do some baked lighting and the use of the image effects with the new post processing stack. Talk about um, HDR and the different workspaces and lighting uh, rendering modes that you can use um, and what sort of assets you can use to achieve um, better quality results just in general. Just get straight into the meat of everything that you can actually try and do. So the first thing I always like to you know start off with is in Unity by default you've got a default skybox. Now the default skybox isn't particularly you know fantastic it doesn't do anything that's overly accurate. Now it's not so much uh, apparent for this scene unless I maybe had lots of windows and things like that but we can use something called um, HDR IMAP and that helps us achieve you know it's almost like a, a 360 picture almost like a reflection probe of um, a scene or a place in real life and you'll be able to draw the um, lighting and the ambient light and whatnot from that image, use it as a skybox and it will help create um, a sort of look of real life. If you have a HDRI map from say a field or you have it from a city environment, if that's where you're going to set your game, it can help you achieve that sort of lighting if you're looking to do that. So if you want to do that, you can go to the asset store and when you're at the asset store, you can search for the Unity HDRI pack and that's completely free and you can use that or you can find some other HDRI maps if you so wish. You want to download and import these. So once we've imported these into the scene, we'll get a selection of the HDRI maps that we can use. And on the lighting tab, if you don't have it, you can go window and lighting on there. We can change the skybox material. So we can choose whichever one we might want to use and you can choose whichever one for this particular instance. If I go back to the inspector, we can you know get different examples and you can see it's already set up into materials for us easily. So what I might use is just the treasure, treasure island white balanced and I'll add that in my scene and you might have seen a slight difference but like I say um, it's a little bit different because this is an entirely closed scene but it is very evident if you've got say an exterior scene or something which um, takes the lighting from the thing once you've baked it out if you've got a lot of windows and things like that. Um, going from the things that we can see within the scene, there's not very much going on. There's um, a camera, the level, um, a directional light and a point light. If I really pretty much disable each element, you don't really see anything in terms of the directional light doing very much in terms of the overall quality because as I said, it's an enclosed scene but a directional light is always a good one to use if you want to achieve some lighting, especially outside or within rooms which might have windows in an interior. Um, you can use other types of lights which might include your point lights and things like that, but like I said with this one, seeing as though this scene has a lot of um, uh, materials that if I show you here with this material, it has um, an emission. So that can actually add to our bounce lighting and help us create a more realistic look but I'll go into that more in more detail further down the line. But another thing to mention is, or tip two let's say, is that if you want to go for realism or more photorealism is you want to aim to use 
uh, PBR related assets, physically based assets. You will see that in Unity as standard with the standard shader, it does support physically based materials. And if you could go and create these in a particular workflow, whether it's using um, the Quixel Suite or Substance Painter and Designer and things like that to create materials and textures for objects and the like, um, you can help to create things that are realistic in all lighting situations. So this can include, you know, being outside, indoors, whatever, in all the ways of sort of authoring textures. You had issues if you had a scene like this and then you maybe made your texture and it looked okay in this scene. If you put it into something drastically different, it might look really weird and you'd have to author your texture again. Whereas with a PBR workflow is you make it once with materials that are based on real life materials. So they um, interact with lighting in a specific way, which is real to real life is no matter which scene you put in, it will always look the same. So they are normally use within Unity if you're using a metallic workflow is they will use an albedo a metallic roughness or smoothness for Unity usually a normal map, an occlusion map, and maybe something for your emission. And they're the things that usually equate to it being helping it be realistic. So that's something to mention. You don't have to use PBR assets, but it goes a long way to making things look better. Now, if I go back to the game view and I select this object that we've got here, I usually like to leave everything by default, but maybe knock the smoothness up a little bit so we'll get a little bit of reflectivity over time. And you can adjust that and I'll go through my um, final scene at the end. You want to use a different rendering path, say forward or deferred are the two main examples. And forward, it's based on the amount of lights that you've got in your scene and will only render usually the brightest lights within a scene. And it doesn't always achieve the most accurate results. And we normally want to switch to deferred lighting. And you can see in the background, it we uh, can see the, now the light in the background because it'll take all the lights into account and will do more accurate results. Now the problem with this is it's more featured towards high-end console and PC because it is more taxing on the machine but of course if we're going for some more realistic results then that's what we want to try and achieve. One thing that goes hand in hand with PBR, I'll give you an example, if we go edit and we go project settings and then we go to player then we go to the other settings down here. You can see at this side, we've got something called color space and color spaces are things which um, work hand in hand with PBI if you want to achieve more realistic results, which is choosing the color space. And there's two different types, there's linear and there's gamma. And in the example that you can see below that the gamma workspace, when you get more sort of white areas, they get blown out very quickly. And um, the advantage of the linear space is that the colors when they're supplied to the um, shaders will sort of brighten linearly over, over time as the light increases. So it makes a more soft effect across the board. Whereas the gamma space, although not supported on some consoles, maybe earlier consoles and lower end mobile devices, um, it doesn't give you as realistic results. And linear space is what PBR when you author PBR materials, that's usually the workspace that it's using. So it's good to switch your color space over to that if you're, again, trying to achieve those more realistic results. So over on the rendering on the color space, we can switch to linear and it'll do some calculations and it will start switching everything over for us. And if you go to edit project settings and graphics, you can see that the different tiers set up for what type of rendering paths you're going to want to use and it's grayed out because it's using by default. But if, like I said, if you go to the camera and you specify what rendering path you want to use, it will override those things in the settings unless there is a, say, a graphics card or a piece of hardware that can't support uh, deferred rendering. And you saw the lighting slightly change or the material slightly update when we changed the linear workspace and everything got a little bit more brighter because we've got a more high dynamic range that we can achieve with the actual asset itself. Now another thing that's pretty important when you're doing a lot of scenes, especially interiors and stuff, even if you don't think some of your materials are actually reflective, um, a reflection probe is always a good one to add. So you can go game object, light, and you can add a reflection probe. And this can go in sort of every different area that you might have in your place. And this is already a have one by default. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just move this reflection probe out of this main folder with all the actual assets in and go back to the game view so you can see the settings that I'm using. So you can see the little preview down here. 
and you can see that it will sort of try to simulate reflection based on um, it will take everything within the scene and it will almost bake it down into a texture map and it will apply some settings towards it to make it sort of simulate how it would reflect in real life. Now some things to mention is that if I go to my scene view and I zoom all the way out you can see that the bounding box for this reflection probe encapsulates the entirety of this actual sort of let's say this sci-fi space center for instance but it's always beneficial to split it up into areas where you might have different sort of scenarios so for the sake of this we ren we're actually rendering just this room in here so what we can do is we can grab this um, sort of tool which will let us scale in the bounding for the actual reflection probe and I'll just um, scale it down and scale it in and I will grab these just little these little anchor points and just move it around so we just encapsulate the entire just the entire scene itself and you can just have a check around to make sure that it looks like it's encapsulated the entire area and just pull it very just pull it as close as you can to the mesh without sort of losing any um, elements to itself now you can have a look and you can do it by real time and you can just do it on a white so it refreshes only once you can actually choose to bake it but you can choose to do that. You can choose the importance, the intensity. If we're doing a room which is like this, which is almost, you can imagine it like a box, as most interiors would likely be, you can set the um, projection to box projection. And if you tick it, it'll slightly update it more towards um, what we might be looking for. Um, we can set different things and we can set the resolution. We could probably knock that up to 256. If you've got a lot of reflection probes, it's... Um, recommended to keep the resolution fairly low because um, you might get problems otherwise and you might get performance dips and unless you're seeing really bad quality it's not recommended especially if you've got a real-time probe which will leave it on for this um, to leave it as it is you can set to keep it as HDR that's fine like I said before when we're on the camera um, which is similar to um, what we were talking about before in terms of the HDRI maps and things like that is that we have a few settings on here and we can allow this camera to be um, HDR enabled and that just stands for high dynamic range and allows um, the lighting and the color space to reach a higher value of lights and darks um, especially is quite important if you're going to use image effects which I'll show you in the in the future and you can choose to disable MSAA because we're going to use our own thing in the future. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you an example of how the reflection probe actually works. So say I click on I click on the material that we've got here and I take away its metallic map. I'll put the metallicness all the way down and then I will knock the smoothness up. I can even put the metallic all the way and we get some weird weird results but I'll leave the smoothness up so you can see that it's it reflects some of the environment and you can see that it's um, you know doing it looks like it's doing it reasonably realistically now if we disable the reflection probe we don't actually see any reflections um, at all and it just maybe looks a bit bland so if I disable the reflection probe and I select back on my asset again and I will sort of decrease maybe the um, smoothness to a 0 0.8 if we keep the reflection probe enabled and we can adjust the um, actual values in real time and you can see how it affects it even without a great deal of actual reflectivity on the assets that we've got. So it's always important to keep that there. So now we've got some basic setup done, we can look at the actual lighting itself and how we can sort of go about setting this up. So in this scene by default, if we go to the lighting tab, it's using the real time global illumination. Now for this, I don't want to use it. And when we untick that, I'll lose some of the sort of um, pre-computed GI that it's already done and it might look a little bit it looks a little bit washed out now. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually use Enlighten to do the sort of map baking. So what you need to do for a lot of things, if we've got an um, em emissive lights and we want emissive lights to affect different surfaces around our scene, you need to make sure that if I click on one of these objects in the scene and I will go to the inspector, you need to make sure that the, the things that you want to be taken into account for the light map, you want them to be static. So light map static and you can tick that up at the top on the static little tick box. Now because all these assets are set as static, what I'm actually going to do is you can see that I've got an emission value here which is has got a map and a colour. You know you can change the colour as you wish from here. So I could just move it to a slightly more ready. 
And what I like to do is usually I'll maybe knock the emission value up. It's usually between a value of not and one, but for the sake of this baking, I might knock it up to three. And all the objects which actually share the same material will all have um, an emission of three. And usually higher, you'll get more sort of bright results. But this is a nice way to test it and you can test this yourself. If I go to the lighting tab again, we can leave everything at the top by default. We can enable mixed lighting. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose baked indirect because we have two different types of actual lighting. We have direct lighting. So if you imagine this is a light and it's shining down um, here, it will have direct light onto this point around here and then nothing else will happen and it'll just have a hot spot here. But whereas if we add um, other lights, area lights or these emissive lights, they will add to the sort of the bounce lighting around and that's the indirect lighting. So you will get light over here, which wouldn't be directly from this light, but it's as light bounces around, it brightens up places where, because if you look in real life and you've got sun coming through your window, you don't just have the corner of your room, which is pitch black. It light bounces around realistically and will softly light up different areas. So what we can do is we can change to baked indirect, which is the um, most accurate version of it. We can keep the light mapper as enlightened because I prefer enlightened for this. You can keep the indirect resolution as two. So with the light map resolution, you can change it and you can adjust it just be 20 to speed up the time and you can increase that as you need to. You can leave the padding at two. And like I said, you can re look up all these values as you need to. You can leave the light map size to 1024. You can leave them compressed. You can add um, ambient occlusion if you want to, and that will add some darker areas, but we'll use an image effect to achieve this later on. We can enable final gather, which is um, a nice thing, which when it's calculating the lighting and how it bounces around on the last bounce, it will calculate the global illumination and just make it um, a higher resolution based on whatever the light map size is. So it will increase time of which it takes to bake, but will increase quality. So for the sake of this, maybe I'll reduce it to 128 and you can go up in increments 128, 256, 512, 1024, but you want to really um, adjust these settings accordingly. And you can tick um, the denoising, which will try and minimize any noise that you get from when you bake out the final gather. And you can leave the directional mode as direction. I sometimes like to put the indirect intensity to about two and you can adjust this as you need to. I'll put the light map parameters down to low for this, uh, for the sake of this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to untick fog because I don't want this on. This is just from however it was before. So what we expect is that because everything's static and we're using these settings to bake out the light mapping, nothing in here is going to move, which is good for us. And we're just going to hit generate lighting. And you can see after the sort of baking is done, that based on the actual color that I chose for the emission value, was a little bit in the ready because you could see it in this preview at the top. I can set it more, I can set it back to white and you can see it might look a little bit bright so we could potentially turn the emission down to 2.5 and we can adjust settings like that over time because no amount of being able to do your lighting will ever be, you know, 100% perfect the first time that you ever do it. So let me give you another example of say a an emissive object that we can use. So say I make a, us a cube here and this just will sit in our scene, just let's say, so we can't see it there and I'll push it back a little bit. What I'll do is I will create a new material and I'll call this red. And what I'll do is I will create it and I will apply that to the cube. Then what I will do is I will change the, just the, the normal albedo to red, then on the emission that we've got, which is here, I'll enable emission and I will change the value to a red value. And you can see it's set to one. And now what I'll do is I will set this to 2.5. And you can see that it will have updated in our preview here. Now I want to set that as static because I want that to be taken into account when we do our light map. I've changed the, um, the colors back to white. And before we bake the lighting out again, I'll give you an example of what we can do for the post-processing effects. So if you go back to the asset store and then you can go to the Unity store and search for the post-processing stack. And this is the thing that we're going to use to control the image effects or the post-processing that we want to use. So we can download and import. And so what we can do from now in our scene, we can go back on the main camera and remember that we want to allow HDR and untick allow MSAA.
because we're going to use our own anti-aliasing here. So what we want to do is we want to add a component here and add, we want to add a post-processing behavior. And this is when we're going to put our new behavior. So if we right click down at the bottom in the project, we can go create and we can go to post-processing profile and we'll call this post-process new, for instance. So what we can choose to use on here, I've got a tutorial which shows you the more ins and outs of all the image effects that you can use and all the effects on low end, high end and the performance issues that you might see. So we click back on the camera and we can add our post process new behavior to the camera. Now we can just edit it straight in the project. So we can add anti-aliasing and we can use the fast, fast approximate or we can use a temporal anti-aliasing. I will use the fast approximate and just keep it on a higher quality. We can use the ambient occlusion, which will add um, sort of a darkened area to either recessed areas or areas where light will go inside and sort of not escape from. And it helps you just add a little bit more depth and realism to your scene. Put the intensity to a 0.4 and set the radius maybe 0.6 or something like that. And we can take away and add it as we so wish. You can keep on down sampling but it's usually best not to overdo certain things. Um, one thing that always you know, looks uh, pretty good, but it is quite a taxing effect, is screen space reflections. And this is something which adds reflection based on just things that you see in screen space. So only things here that we can see will be added for the um, ray trace reflections. And it will try and sort of do some calculations based on the um, reflections that we have and try and make it more accurate. We can use the type as physically based. We can use additive, but it's not as accurate. So we can use physically based and keep the quality on low, or you can increase it to high, but seeing as though we're going for the highest quality, we'll do that. We can choose to reflect back faces, but it will reflect things that wouldn't normally be reflected. So say the back of this light might would if I enable it, you can see that it will start by doing reflections on the backsides of floors and walls. So it will make it more accurate. You can see if I enable or disable, you can see slight changes in the object over there. And you can adjust all the settings as you want to. We can pretty much skip all the things that are here because they're not a great deal of um, benefit quite yet. We can enable eye adaption and that helps to try and tone down some bright areas that we've got, but we need to redo the lighting a little bit before we do that. We can add something called bloom, and I'm sure everybody knows what bloom is, but if you go a little bit overboard with bloom, it can look a little bit crazy. So we can change the intensity down to maybe a 0.1. So we get a little bit of intensity on there and have the, the just the threshold up a little bit higher, maybe just about you know, almost two. So we take away the just the sheer intense uh, values that we get. You can choose to use a texture if you so wish. And if you go inside the post processing and you go to the textures and then you go to the lens dirt, we can just add a lens dirt effect and it could make it look a little bit more dirty on the areas which might have bloom. Now, one thing I always find important to add is some sort of color grading. And color grading is always good because it comes with its own tone mapping and in photography and things like that, tone mapping helps to just sort of bring bright areas down to sort of a, a, a realistic um, sort of range. And I like to use the, the filmic tone mapper because it's slightly more realistic towards getting, you know, closer and closer and closer to try and make it look more realistic and the post exposure is zero. You know, we can choose to increase or decrease this. We'll just leave it as by default now. I like to sometimes, depending on what style you're going for, is increase the saturation slightly so it looks more brighter in areas which have got, you know, uh, sort of vivid colours and it makes them look more vivid. You can choose to use the trackballs to sort of maybe make your scene fit a specific style. So say if we, you know, want to add a little bit more, you know, blue to our scene here. And in the middle trackball, we can leave that as is because if we start moving it, it might, you know, look a little bit weird. And we can do the same here. But we've got some of the sort of slope values that we can change and will affect, you know, the, the midtones and the highlights and the shadows within the scene. And we can choose to sort of bring them down to a value that, you know, as if we saw that the, the scene looked maybe a little bit overly bright at the start. So we can maybe pull, pull the first trackball down slightly. You could use the middle 
and you could you know maybe overall pull the and we could adjust the last um the offset value maybe you know pull this down slightly as well you know it depends what you're trying to achieve with the scene you just you can mess about with all the things here and you can add some vignette so you can maybe just darken the edges of the actual screen just to sort of blur that out a little bit um, like I've said before, we can use a series of um, different style um, lights. So we could use, if we go game object lights, we've got different types. So we've got directional light, which would act as your sun. We've got point lights if you need them, which would affect a sort of um, almost like a light bulb in an area. Spotlight would be just as you would imagine a spotlight. But area lights are something that if you can just about see it, if I make this a little bit bigger, um, the area light is almost a just a box if you can imagine it because this is a little bit bright at the minute and it can only be used in real time but will help add some bounce lighting to your scene if you need to brighten areas up so say we had a window at say this side and it was quite dark in this scene we could add an area light over here and if we bake out the lighting it will just add some more um ability to bounce if we're not using say um the emissive lights that we've got in this scene but most scenes that you use whether it's an indoor or outdoor you will use a sun you might use emissive lights if you've got sort of light fixtures and things like that you might use area lights or windows and things to make it a little bit more bounce light around you can use point lights and things if you need to do that but as i mentioned before we had a material that we created here which was just red and we gave it an emissive value of three um, we're just going to rebake the lighting out because I slightly reduced the overall intensity of these lights and I added this one here and set it to static so it would then add some sort of um, it would add the bleeding to different areas as you know we require so what I like to do is make sure the auto generator is off because I only like it to do the lighting when I want it to and we can just clear the baked data and you can see that it's um, taken away all the sort of bounce lighting around that we had. It'll still have the image effects and the things that we had, which it doesn't look too bad, but we'll generate lighting again. And one thing I'll care to mention whilst it's baking out is that usually the, the baking by itself will be fairly fast, especially if you've got the settings more low. But if once you enable the final gather, which will increase the overall quality, it will take a little bit longer. Um, so you just need to really adjust the settings accordingly and just just try them out you can turn them down if you need quick iteration times you can potentially use the um, progressive light mapper where you can change the light mapper there but i like to use enlighten just for the sake of that it's something that i'm used to using and you can change or if say you've come to the end of your project and you need to sort of bump up the lighting to increase the quality you need to just you know adjust the settings so you might want to increase the light map resolution you only really want to increase the padding if maybe you've got some issues. You might want to increase the light map size if you want your light maps to be bigger and more accurate. The light map in, um, resolution could be increased as a little um, tool tips to explain what each of these is. And you can obviously increase the final gather. And as you can see that the lighting's baked back out, you can see in my normal scene that it looks quite white. And you know, based on the actual image effects that we've got on here, it looks more blue. So we can go back to the post process and go back to the inspector. And maybe if we uncheck the color grading, it's the color grading that's doing that. So what we can do is we can move back down to, say, um, this, the slope trackball, and just maybe bring the sort of ball back to maybe the middle. Or maybe add a little bit of something there so we get it more towards the maybe the color that we're actually looking for and what we could do is if we want maybe a little bit more reflectivity in our scene we can click back on one of our objects that we've got and the smoothness value that we had you know we could potentially increase to you know we can go all the way up or we can go to just about 0.8 and you can see the reflection of the red cube that we had so you remember uh, we put something in here and you can see that this part of the scene you can see that the emission affected the top the bottom this side and things like that so you know all in all we can get more towards a realistic look over time with sort of adding little bits and little bits to the sort of overall look to make it try and move towards a bit more realism and I will go back to the original scene that I made and then you can see that I wrote all the same things that we've just featured 
previously and I've got the material and the, those that emission set to 3 and I've got all these objects and they were set to a mission of about 2.8 and you can see in the scene that I've done exactly the same bake settings where we've left over the same we've clicked the the mixed lighting for the baked global illumination we've baked indirect we've got all the same settings for the resolutions and we choose to do the final gather and compress the light maps and you can see that in game you know I can adjust accordingly and it will change as as needed so I'll quickly run through the things that we've covered in this video is that we've got a imported HDRI maps which can help to add a sort of a little bit of realism because it'll be a panoramic shot of a real life uh, scenario and it will help to bring lighting from there you can use PBR assets to you know look and work realistically to help you author realistic looking materials for any lighting environment that you've got so they're very good to start learning you use the deferred on your main camera use the deferred rendering path and you want to do the linear color space which you can do within the edit project settings and player and you can choose linear there which works well with PBR because that's the recommended thing to use you can use reflection probes and in this scene I've got reflection probes um, in a few different areas as you can see that the bounding boxes are there um, we've got everything set as static that you want to be taken into account on the actual light map we've got some sort of we've got some reflective objects so this material that I've got has some reflectivity so we can see things inside other things We've looked at the lighting settings, so we enabled the mixed lighting for the baked and light, um, light mapper, and we chose to enable final gather and things like that. We've got and looked at the emissive lights that will add to the global illumination, and you, we also touched on using area lights and other lights to add to that. And we looked at using image effects to give an example of um, adding the screen space reflections, ambient occlusion, and things like that to try and sharpen up your scene and you can see that I can run around in this scene and you know do everything that we normally need to do as you would expect from the scene and you can even if it's static you can hide this object and it will still do the same thing that it or uh, that it was baked out to do so if I go on the inspector and I hide that cube you can see that there's still you know a hot spot on bleeding at the bottom because it's already baked into the texture so you don't always need the lights still there if you don't actually you know need it anymore and one thing to care to mention is say you've got real-time objects like a character or things that can't be static all the time because static objects never move you can use light probes so you can go game object uh, light and light probe group and you can add these little sort of yellow balls and you can just edit the light probes duplicate them around and you can add them in grids around your scene depends if you're doing an interior or an exterior you can read the unity documentation on how exactly to use light probes but when these get baked in they bake some of the information that we've got from you know the um, light mapping and it will apply a similar set of information to things that move so say you've got a character and you need it to have you know this baked lighting that we've got around here and all around is that it will get baked into one of these probes and as soon as the character or real-time object gets near a particular probe it will get the lighting based on that so it's just another thing to mention like I said at the very beginning of the video you can go as detailed as you need to with lighting and you know it can go far beyond what I've mentioned and some of the things that I've mentioned might not be 100% correct but these were just my tips and tricks to try and achieve um, a more realistic or stylistic look for you know your games within Unity so sorry that this was quite a long one I hope you enjoyed it thanks very much for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe cheers